All right, so today's Monday and we're gonna review factoring and then review for the quiz. So sum and difference of cubes is new. So on worksheet eight, it talks about the patterns for sum and difference of cubes over here. All right, and it also talks, it has a list of them. So glance through these numbers. 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216, 343, 512, 729, 1,000. Okay, those are perfect cubes. Watch for those when we get there. All right. So what would you do if I asked you to factor number one right here? Two terms. Don't need two parentheses. Just take out a 2 and an x. And if you divided this by 2x, you'd just have an x. Am I in worksheet 7 or is that not the right problem? Okay, thank you. This is worksheet 7. And then we'd have a plus 6 back here. The idea is that you divided it out of each of those terms so that if you redistribute it, you'd end up back with what we started with. Everybody feel like that's an Algebra 1 skill that they're good with? Okay, that brings us to questions like number 3 here. Three terms mean we're probably going to end up doing this. We do need to watch sometimes for a common factor, something that they have in common. These don't have anything in common. Now, super important, please, please, please try to work on not using the whole slide and divide method, okay? I know some of you learned that way. We're going to practice really hard using just guess and check, okay? The idea is to get an x squared, you need an x times an x. To get a 15, you could try 1 and 15, or 3 and 5, or 5 and 3, or 15 and 1, right? The idea is that they need to add to an 8, so I'm going to go with the 5 and 3, or the 3 and 5, it doesn't matter. To get a positive 15 and a positive 8, these both need to be positive. The idea is that you are checking by foiling it back together. X times X gives you the X squared, okay? And the five times three gives you the 15. But the trick is, do these middle terms, which would be here and here, okay? Do those make eight X? So a positive five X plus three X is eight X. Everybody okay? All right. What could we do on number four? First, factor out an R. Then what's left is R squared minus 36. This, these are both perfect squares, and it is the difference of perfect squares that can be factored. The sum of perfect squares cannot. Anybody remember how that goes? The square root of r squared is r. The square root of 36 is 6. And then we need a positive and a negative, and the order doesn't matter. But this way, the middle terms cancel each other out. Plus 6r and minus 6r is 0 in the middle. Does that seem okay to everybody? Remember, difference of squares. All right. Um, so five is difference of squares. Can anyone do that one real fast? Four R plus three and four R minus three. Everybody good? Four R times four R is 16 R squared. This would be 12 R and negative 12 R if you did the middle. And this times this would be the negative 9 at the back. So again, difference of squares, difference of perfect squares. Watch for that one. All right. Um, number 6, we could take out an x, and that would leave us x squared minus 12x plus 32. This seems like a good one to talk about because 32 has a lot of factors, right? We need to narrow that down, 1 times 32, 2 times 16, 4 times 8. Did I get them all? Okay, 
Any of those going to make a 12? What do you think? Four and eight? Okay. Don't lose that X out front, by the way. So X times X is X squared. And you're telling me you think we need a four and an eight or an eight and a four. The order doesn't matter. But I need them to add up to be negative 12. So I need both of them to be negative, maybe. Does that work? Then my middle terms here, negative 4x and negative 8x, would make the negative 12x in the middle. Okay. Factoring is one of those things where I'll, some of you are super comfortable, like this is easy peasy, and some of you are like, oh, I hate factoring. It's like right up there with fractions, right? It's okay, you'll be able to use a calculator if you're not good with your multiplication facts, but you really have to get smooth at factoring. All right, can I go on, find a couple more? Let's try one that doesn't have one as the coefficient out front. Ugh, number eight looks tricky. Can you take a seven out of all these? No, so how can we get a seven B squared? Yep, a 7b and a 1b is the only way we're going to get a 7b squared, right? 7 is prime and nothing else goes in there. Now, 70 could be 1 in 70, it could be 2 in 35, it could be 5 in 14, it could be 7 in 10. Anybody want to try anything? This is where it gets tricky, okay? You want to just try something. Like if I put here, um, what would most of you try first? 7 and 10, 10 and 7. Does anybody know why I know right away that's not going to work? Look right here. What does this parenthesis have in common? You could pull out a 7 of that parenthesis, right? But could we pull a 7 out from the beginning? No, therefore, putting these together in one where you could pull a 7 out of a parenthesis is not going to work. All right, if we go back and we try the 10 and the 7 in this order, this is 49B, does everybody see that? And this one is 10B. Can we make a 39B out of that? Okay, if we want a positive 39B, we could have positive 49 and negative 10. So if we put a negative on the 10 here and a positive back here, I think we got it right on the first try. But this is where you just keep trying. If it didn't work, you switch them around. If it doesn't work and you don't get the 39 in the middle, then you try you know, 5 and 14 or 2 and 35 or whatever you need to try. Don't erase would be my suggestion because as soon as you erase your last try, you're going to end up going back and trying the same thing again, right? Just like put a mark, that didn't work, this didn't work, but keep track of what you tried. All right, so that's how it ended up factoring because it's 10, negative 10 times 7 is negative 70. First times first gives me this 7b squared. And then negative 10 and 49 gave us 39. All right, should we try 9? Can you take a 2 out of all those? No, so we're going to have a 2a and an a. That's the only way to make that at the front. Now, 56 seems like it has a lot of factors. What comes to mind, though? 8 and 7, maybe? I don't know that that's going to work, but could I put the 8 in here? What do you think? Some of you would understand that if I put an 8 here, 2 would be able to come out, and that's not true of the beginning, so therefore it can't happen here. So let's try the 8 back here and the 2 here. I don't even know if this is working. Uh, 7. Wait. 8 times 7 is 56. I'm like, what am I doing? That doesn't look right. Sorry, sorry. 8 times 7 is 56, okay? This will be 16a, and this would be 
7a. So if we wanted it to be negative 23, we'd need both of those to be negative. And when we put two negatives in, will it multiply back here to make a positive 56? All I can say is you just need to practice, okay? So there's a Delta Math assignment on this. It's short, but you can always do extra Delta Math. It will let you do extra problems. I'm going to jump down to number 12. This is the sum and difference of perfect cubes. This is x times x times x, and this is 2 times 2 times 2, or negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. All right, this is the pattern that's on the notes sheet. It says if you have two perfect cubes, you take the cube root of each, so we'd have an x, and a 2, or a negative 2. So we're doing this one. It's the difference of cubes. So you take the cubed root of each, so you'd have an x and a 2. Then the rule is you take the first term here, the a, and you square it. In the middle, it says you take a times b. This is a, and this is b. So we take a times b is a 2x. I know it seems like a negative 2x, but we're going to talk about the signs in a minute. And back here, you do the b squared or the 2 squared. The negative is actually part of the problem here. The a was x and the b was 2, as we said, the cubed root of each of those. Okay. The signs. Look at the difference between these. If this is plus, this is plus, and back here it goes minus plus. If this is a negative, we started with a negative, the first parenthesis gets the negative, and the second parenthesis has to have two positives. Now, what did I do that's kind of funky? I wrote two squared back here. I just wanted to show you where that came from. We should write that as a four. So we have x minus two x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now, two things. I could show you that this works. I can do it super fast. If I distribute the x through all that, don't write this down, okay? If I distribute the negative 2 through everything back there, Look what happens when I do all that distributing. Do those drop out and all I have is x cubed minus 8? Okay. The other big thing is that this second parenthesis will never factor again. Okay. If I try to factor that as x plus 2 times x plus 2, I'll get a 4 in the middle, not a 2. Doesn't work. All right. Let's try a couple more of these and then we're going to go on and review the rest of the day. Um, number 13, 27 and 64, we're on that big list of perfect cubes. All right, I'm going to write this out as a cubed plus b cubed. What is the cube root of this? 3 and a u. And 64, does anybody know what the cube root of 64 is? It is 4. Well, that was messy. All right. So this is our A and this is our B. So now we're supposed to follow the pattern. It goes A plus B, A squared minus AB plus B squared. The quiz on this is not until next week, maybe Wednesday. We'll try to remember to do one of these perfect cubes every day. We'll see it's possible I could, we'll see how we're doing. I could even give you the patterns on the quiz, okay, or on the board or something. 
this point, I just want you to be able to use them more than know them. We're doing cubics in this first, or doing quadratics in the next unit, not cubics. So, all right, so we need an A plus a B in that first parenthesis. So it'll just say 3U plus 4. But then we need an A squared, it says. This is where everybody messes up. What is a 3U squared become? 9U squared, because it's 3U times 3U. Everybody okay? And then in the middle, we need an A times a B, which would be a 3U times a 4, which would be a 12U. And then at the back, we need the B, which was 4 squared, which would be a 16. And then the signs come from the factoring pattern. It's going to be minus plus. Now, I'm going to tell you a, a hint for that, and it is the word soap. We learned a lot about soap during COVID, right? Washing our hands a thousand times a day. But this soap stands for same sign. Whatever you started with up here is what you put in the first parenthesis, okay? The O stands for opposite sign. The next sign is the opposite. And then the AP stands for the last sign is always positive. So the signs, this one is the same. This one is the opposite. And this guy at the back is always positive. All right. I know some of you are thinking, I need about 12 more examples of that. Okay, well, that's what the delta math is for. And I can do another example every day at the beginning of the lesson or the end of the lesson until we're feeling more confident with this. But I want to have plenty of time to review for your quiz, okay? So I'm going to stop and tell you the homework on this is a delta math. Let me put that in this slide. Okay, so the assignment, now, that would be the assignment that I'm giving you for today, but I'm not going to collect that or check on it for a few days, so if you need to spend your time tonight reviewing for the quiz, it's okay, all right? Now, with that in mind, this is the quiz review worksheet that I gave you. What can I help with? You notice I spent a lot of time making this worksheet helpful. I was hoping these are the targets you should be able to say, I do know how to calculate slope, midpoint, etc. Where to find examples. Okay, the worksheet numbers are here. Was there any more uh, worksheet? Worksheet two, it says there's more practice. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, is there any of that you want me to go over? Distance, midpoint, I can fly through them super fast, but no, we're good there? Okay, make sure you know them. Look them up if you're confused. The worked out answer key to this is two different places in the Google Classroom, okay? There's a, a post called, oh great, nothing is signed in. We don't have time to be dealing with this. Uh, week two's lesson plan is in here, by the way, um, but under important resources, there's one here called reviews for quiz one, okay? And there are two things attached here. The practice we're going over right now and the key to that, but also worksheet six, I think, in your packet. Does it say extra practice at the top on worksheet six? Anybody check in for me? Yes. Attached is also worksheet six and the key to worksheet six, okay? All right. 
You said you didn't need me to do those. What about graphing a line? Can you get the y by itself and graph it? Or do it by intercept method? Remember, that's where we could put in a, a zero for each of these. Woo. If I put x is zero, this would say negative 5y equals 10, which would become negative 2, cross 0 down 2. Or I could put the zero in for y, in which case it would say 2x equals 10, which would make x 5. So I could graph that line this way. I'm not going to do this other one. It's wonky. And honestly, the one on the quiz is very much like this. So can I just leave it at that rather than spend extra time doing one that isn't on the quiz? And that's the whole first standard, okay? There's a distance, midpoint, slope. Oh, actually it's not. There's this question too, I lied. How would you find the whether these are parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So we need to calculate slopes real fast. Remember, it's change in y over change in x, change in y over change in x. And I'm getting something really wonky. Did anybody else get something not even close? <laughs> OK, so these are neither. But are you good that you know the difference between parallel, perpendicular, neither? Okay. That's the whole first standard. Then second standard that's on the quiz is this idea of solving a linear equation. Now, I have not written one like this. I don't think you had one like this in Delta Math. You could just separate this. 2C is over 4. 11 is over 4. Then what is the common denominator we should multiply through by? Four, but what do you do? Be careful, you gotta do everything by four, right? So if you did four times two C divided by four, you'd get two C. Four times 11 divided by four would be 11, but then you also have to distribute the four over here. If I subtract two C over that way, and I add 12 over this way, I'd have 23 equals 34C. Did anybody else do that one already or check the key? Is it that disgusting? Did anybody else get that? Yeah, okay. Gross, gross, gross. But that's how it wants you to leave it, okay? Don't give me decimals on that section. Um, the only other one you might want me to go over on that section, do you remember these? You have to distribute first, and when you distribute, it's across the top and across the bottom. So 1 times 2 would be 2. On the bottom, you get a 21. And then when you did 1 7th, this is 4 over 1, so you'd end up with 4 on the top and 7 on the bottom. And you'd multiply through by a 21. You want me to do that step still? If you multiplied through here by a 21, you'd get 2x plus 12. I hope someone's checking me. 12x minus 19 times 7. Is it 133? Okay. And then you could solve that. Okay, again, I, you can do it on your calculator, but I'm doing each of these by 21. And remember, you type 21 times 19 divided by 3, 21 times 4 divided by 7. Are we good? If you want me to keep going and finish one of these, you just got to let me know. All right, then now we're on to the back of the quiz, okay? The back of the quiz starts with this standard, writing linear equations. And the first thing it asks is for you to state all three forms. So slope intercept, I expect no one will get that one wrong. But what is point slope? How do I write point slope? 
y minus h there we go and then standard form is the icky one and it goes it's not icky to state it's just icky when we have to get rid of fractions and follow their silly rules so you have to be able to write all three of those on the quiz mostly because I know if you don't know the forms, that's a concept error and you're not going to be able to get some of the rest of the stuff down. Yes. One. That's a good question. Okay. One. Standard form answer on one question. All right. So how many of these, any of these you want me to do? All of these? Okay, parallel to this means the parallel slope would still be one half, right? If you're given this point, I'm going to use point slope form to start. They want us to end up in slope intercept, but because I have a point and a slope, I'm going to go y minus. Remember, you're getting the y value from here. This is your x1, sorry, and your y1. Come from that point right there. And your slope is the one half. And then it would be x minus negative six or plus six. If you distribute, you get one half x plus half of six is three. So this one happens to come out nice. And you end up with, did anybody get that answer? Ew, that's a really bad example. Does anybody know why? It's the same line. This line goes through that point. I just saw that. That's a bad example. How far you should have fixed that. Um, do you want me to do another one? It's supposed to be parallel to this line through this point. And the problem is that that point is on that line. It was a really bad example. It, like if we had changed this to a nine, then it's a great example. <laughs> so we didn't ever use that 11, but it turned out to be the same. It was just a bad example for my part. All right, perpendicular to, what does perpendicular to mean? What do we need to do to that to find the perpendicular slope? Yep, we need to flip it over and get one fourth, and we need to change it to a negative. And then we're going to use this x1 and this y1. So I'm going to start with point slope form. I would have y minus 10 equals negative one-fourth x minus one from here. Now it wants standard form, so eventually we need to get rid of the fractions. But do you remember, uh, same as when we were doing the other equation solving, you want to distribute first, okay? So y minus 10 equals negative one-fourth x Negative one fourth times a negative one over one would be a positive one fourth. Can I just talk about this for a second? If it had said slope intercept form, what would your next step be? If it had said to get the answer in slope intercept, you would have needed to do what now? Just add the 10 over to the other side. Is everyone okay? Now, when you do that, you would want to do math, enter, enter. So you would end up with 10 plus 1 fourth. Don't put down 10.25. If you were using fractions, I want you to use all fractions. So if you push 10 plus 1 divided by 4, do that math, enter, enter. Um, should be 41 over 4. Did anybody? 41 over 4, yeah. That would be 10 and 1 fourth. That's not what this question asked for. 
you could get that form and then do standard form. But if I go back up here, this was my little aside. If I knew I was going to standard form, I could have multiplied right here through by a four to get standard form. Get rid of the fractions. Sorry. So 4 times y would be 4y. 4 times 10 would be 40. Over here, 4 times negative 1 fourth would be negative 1x. Negative 10x. Just, no, that would be 1. I can, I'm good. I'll be okay. <laughs> 4 times 1 divided by 4 back here would be a plus 1. Okay, standard form. What do we need to do? Move the x to the side with the y, so we end up with a, a 1x plus 4y. And then we need to move this guy over here. I got 41. Did anybody else have that? Okay. This is standard form. One question says standard form on the quiz. All right, this one says you get to leave it in point slope form. There is one on the quiz that says you get to leave it in point slope form. I don't know that it's the one that starts with two points or not, but how do you start this? Find the slope. 4 minus 2 are the y's, and negative 6 minus 1 are the x's. 2 over negative 7. Anybody have ugly negative 2 sevenths as a slope? Okay. And then when it says point slope, you could pick either one of these. Can I go with this one because it has positives? y minus 2 is the y value, and our slope x minus from the point a 1. This is point slope and you could leave it. Or you could use this negative 6, 4 and left it. It would have been either one of those is fine. Now, do you want to practice one more time with standard form since we have this or not? Okay, we'll leave it. If anybody wants me to come back and put it in standard form just for practice, I can. Um, this is still on that same section of the quiz, by the way. It says uh, use an application. A game has a monthly plan where they pay a fat, flat fee and then a certain amount. So 125 minutes. By the way, down here it says X is number of minutes. So if you get confused about which is which, it says minutes, and then you'd have dollars. So 125 minutes cost $16, and then 90 minutes cost $13.90. Now, some of you could figure out the cost per minute without doing anything crazy. It's just the slope. How much did this go up? And how much did this go up? So if you do 16 minus 1390 over 125 minus 90, that's really just finding the slope. Anybody come up with an answer there? I don't have my calculator open. Is it 210? 16 minus 1390 is 210 divided by 35 minutes is Six cents, 0 0.06, did anybody get that? Okay. And it's all labeled for us even, cost per minute. It's 
All right, and then it says to make an equation. So I would suggest you start with one of these points, like the first one, y minus 16 equals 0.06x minus 125. And then if I distribute this, Point oh six times one twenty five is seven point five. And then if I add sixteen over there to a negative seven point five, I get eight point five. Anybody have that answer already? Make sure I didn't make a mistake. Okay. And then two hundred and twenty five minutes, you would just type. All right, now we need to pull out our graphing calculator. Yes. I, I don't care on that one. Yep. I mean, if it's wrong and I can't find any work, then it's a concept error. All right, linear regression. Grab your calculators so we can feel comfortable that we've practiced this today. Everybody got a calculator? Grab one from the back wall if you need to. Okay, how do we get there to put this in? By the way, this is a weird one. What are we supposed to use for our X value? Years since 1985. So we're supposed to subtract 1985 from all these. So this would be year zero this would be year five this would be year 10 and this would be year 15 and that's what we're going to put in list one and then in list two we're going to put this cost okay does everybody see where i got that information okay it's stat sorry whoops it's stat enter to put these in. Can anybody read them? Screen? Was it just 0, 5, 10, 15? Anybody read me those other ones real fast, nice and loud? Whoops, I messed it up already. 1550. Thank you. I can't see both screens easily. Everybody got them in? Okay. Then we go back to stat. Make sure you have them in list one and list two. Anybody's got trouble with that, let me know. Go back to stat. Now what? Someone did their homework, yes. Over to calculate, and it's not the first one, okay? It's doing, we're doing the line of regression, which is choice four. You can either scroll down or type a four. And then I would like you to learn to store it, in which case you need a Y1. If you have an older calculator, you just put it at the end of the line. You type the Y1, which is VARS. Arrow to the right, enter, enter. All right, if your R value does not show up tomorrow, bring the calculator up and I will help you turn it on as long as you know you're supposed to be putting down an R value, 0.998. Okay, I'm going really fast here. Anybody read the equation to me? Y equals, what did we come up with? Okay. And this is yes, I'm not going to ask you that. It wants 2022, so you could either put in an x equals 22 or use the table. If I have stored it, by the way, guys, if you go to y equals, you should see the equation in there. If it's an old equation, you're going to get wrong answers when you go to the table. And then what was I looking for? 22? Not 122? <laughs> 
Then if I scroll to 22, I got 2170. Okay, interpret the slope, I forgot. It was cost per year, wasn't it? You gotta do change in Y over change in X. So $85 cost per year. That's supposed to say cost. All right, I am here after school. Actually, I'm in East 128 after school. The parking lot is a disaster. You might as well come in and see me for 10 minutes, right? If you need help, come see me after school. I'd be glad to help you. Oh, you need it turned on. Yep, no problem. Let me stop the recording. All right, guys, we totally did this wrong because 2022 minus 1985 is actually 15 and 22 is 37. We should have been put in a 37 in. which was 34.45. Glad somebody's fixing me.